live. Hey everyone, welcome to SEO this week. This is episode 145. Titled it Link Building Experts and Negative SEO. Because go figure, that's the topics we're gonna talk about today. Uh only six stories, so today should go by pretty quickly, actually. Uh Unless Ted and I get on some crazy rant, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> how you doing today, Ted? I'm doing pretty good. I'm I'm feeling like today's a good rant day, and uh, <laughs> negative SEO is a good rant topic. It is. It's and to me, it's kind of odd that Google is so adamant that they can beat it, uh, despite proof that. Uh, we've seen from other people, you know, or, you know, even ourselves that they're not as good at stopping negative SEO as they claim they are. So I, I wonder what no, they're... They're, they are excellent at claiming it. They're just not excellent at making good on those claims. Right. And actually doing it. So I, to me, I just don't understand what the purpose behind them maintaining that line is. You know what I mean? So, well, it's brand uh, image. They want to look good in front of the world. They don't care about actually doing good in front <laughs> of the world. But if it's to me, isn't it odd that it's it's so easy to debunk the statement? Yeah, but they they know that ninety nine percent of SEOs out there will never lift a finger to do that. Uh -huh. So really, all they have to do is make the claim, and that ninety nine percent will just drink the Kool Aid. Just be louder than the people that are counterclaiming it. Yeah, and and they're Google. They have the best minds in the world. So how could they be wrong? <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. And I was well, hell, heck, we since we started off the content, uh, that's what it was, it was John Mueller surprises everyone with a negative answer to SEO. So despite the fact that this has been written by that hack Roger Monty. Uh, I wanted to show it just because uh, it, it was a good topic is negative SEO and do links from negative SEO. Are they, um, is it still possible to do it? I will say yes. John Mueller says no. He says we filter out well, all kinds of bad. Pro problem number one is the difference in how they define it. Uh, they're coming from the standpoint that negative SEO equals spammy backlinks. Yep. I come from the standpoint that spammy backlinks is one of more than a hundred possible attack vectors and that that's one of the least effective negative SEO attack vectors. Right. So if, if you define it as negative SEO equals spammy backlinks, well, A, you're, you're a bad SEO. <laughs> uh, B, you got it wrong. I mean, you're just clearly not helping people deal with these problems so i would say that if you know john mueller is making those claims he's clearly never had to deal with helping somebody recover after there's been internal sabotage of rankings disgruntled yeah. employees or fired seos he's never had to deal with link cleanup and reconsideration requests and he's uh, never had to deal with, you know, denial of service attacks, knocking websites down just prior to Black Friday. So the idea to say that it's not real is just factually laughable. Yeah. Like they are so completely wrong. And then the notion that, oh, you can just ignore it. You could go to any security firm in the world and try to get them on record publicly saying that if you have evidence of somebody trying to do harm to your business, we recommend you ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> it is fundamentally the stupidest advice ever given. They cannot support it in any way, shape, or form. And anybody that tries to say otherwise is an idiot. Yep. On the record, rant over. <laughs> rant over. That was a good rant, Ted. <laughs> so here's some things that I want to test with this. One, I want to test this idea. Uh, and the basis of this question was, hey, I got a whole bunch of spammy links. I think they're bad. Typically, what that conversation always turns into is I have a whole bunch of spammy links with porn or gambling or Viagra pointing at my website. Should I clean that up? And as Ted pointed out, the answer is always no. 
uh, they and they say that oh we can see those and we filter it out. So, uh, how are these often built? The most times you're, you're talking about a piece of software to you or maybe you know that are publicly known like x rumor or gsa seer uh you can build those with with that you can build them with a uh, scrape box if you want to or um what's the other one gs scraper you can build the comments and guest post links with gsa scraper gs scraper um so what I wanted to do was actually invite people who are willing to let me negative SEO their websites. Uh, it doesn't necessarily, I don't want you to give me your money site or a client site or something like that. Just this is my test site, for example. Uh, I have, uh, I don't have enough of them actually out there to, to do this um, at scale. So if you guys have a website you want me to test, or you're willing to allow me to test, I want to test some processes to actually create link spam, for lack of a better term, that will demote your website. I can tell you that I can do it with GSA SEER and I don't need thousands. Um, I actually figured out the number-ish, um, you know, which one's three to 500, and I can pretty much tank your site off of the first page with just three to 500 links. I don't need thousands. And I certainly don't need to actually use porn. Uh, I can make it look quote unquote natural uh, and still tank your website with tools. Um, on the foot reverse of that, I can actually rank your website with thousands uh, and or with just uh, hundreds. Uh, so it's, I think what the couple things that are here is link velocity uh, might be a play um, and just the amount of and an anchor text and stuff. So uh, negative SEO is still real um, and it's really possible to do it. I just want to be able to have some proof where we can put together this compiled study that says, look, John Mueller, you're full of shit. And then I want to show how we can use tools like the disavow tool uh, perhaps link research tools in their uh, detox in their detox boost to reverse the effects of that. And here's the value of doing doing that before Google points out that you have uh, bad links and gives you a manual penalty, uh, which is typically what I would recommend most people do. Uh, and because they don't audit their links and they they hurt themselves with the disavow tool. I typically say, unless you get a manual penalty, leave it alone because, you know, at that point, you've already done enough damage to, <laughs> or the damage has been done. You really can't hurt it more using the disavow tool uh, versus if you do it beforehand, you could potentially disavow links that are actually helping you. Uh, and you don't want to do that either. So excellent. I, to me, that's a, it's a great test. This is a conversation that will go on forever. Uh, can you negative SEO with links, a website? My answer is yes, you can. Google's John Mueller's answer and a couple of the line is no. Can you negative SEO with a black hat script called a slow loris? Absolutely. Oh. It'll get uh, a website to start returning 500 errors. And if that happens while Googlebot is crawling it, you drop out of the search results. And when you come back in, you typically rank a lot lower for weeks. Mm -hmm. And that's how they get uh, online retailers right before Black Friday. It's one of the most effective negative SEO attacks on earth. It caused uh, my clients in the past, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of uh, peak season lost revenue. Well, not to mention the fact that Google's synonymous with putting out a Black Friday update and tanking everybody else at the same time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's uh, that's its own category of negative SEO. <laughs> uh, the next part of this post was actually really interesting is the Google or John's response to uh, the, um, the, the original poster that... It wasn't actually negative SEO. It was that he was using an expired domain and that Google is still counting the old content that was used to be on the domain when determining what to rank the website 
that is currently on the All right. T- time out. Time out. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'd get Ted going today. <laughs> All right. All right. So I keep hearing from the white hat community how Google's AI is so advanced that it can understand the meaning of the sentences on your page and figure out the intent of the searcher, but they can't figure out the old website from the new. Like, that's beyond their super AI technology. Yep. I mean, you can't have it both ways. Either, either their shit is rock solid and awesome AI and they can detect and discern all these amazing details, or they can't do the simple, most basic crap ever imagined that a beginning 101 programmer could solve. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have it both ways. So John Mueller, if you're watching this, either Google's technology is really advanced and can figure it out, or your technology is dumber than an earthworm. Yep. So decide. (laughs) (laughs) To me, I never understood that argument. Is what what would be the point of Google to maintain? I could see like cash and way back kind of stuff that theory, but why would you do that over and over again? in a modern day world where people are buying and selling domains on mass either you're crawling it you're updating the content of it and you want to provide the most relevant content and what should it matter if my site used to be a baby toys site and now it's a, a car site what does it matter what is on my site right now that's is it the best content that's what should be addressed and I, to me i don't understand why google would if they are doing that why that would be why the, that was so e- either john mueller doesn't know what he's talking about when he makes that statement or google's lying about their ai capability right and it's just basically pick pick which one you can't <laughs> You know, it could be both. He might not what's know what's going on, and they might be lying about their AI capability. It could be both, yep. or it's one or the other. And are they lying, or is it other SEOs or SEOs or our industry just kind of glorifying what, you know, as we guess to what the algorithm is doing, we're making them seem all, all, all powerful, when in truth, Google, the reps are like, well, yeah, that's not what we're doing, but that's a cool idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, over the weekend, I, I found what appeared to be Google uh, griefing me specifically. <laughs> and I, I might be wrong on it, but what I found was I was running change detection on uh, my own website. And for several hours over the weekend, Google injected a link into my search result to the How Search Works blog entry at Google. Uh (laughs) So I thought that was a little weird. But as an exercise, I went and read that blog entry. Since they gave it to me, it's like, okay, Google, you put it in my search result. I guess I better go read it. And they confessed to a lot of crazy shit. (laughs) (laughs) And so tomorrow on SEO Fight Club, we're going to go over the How Search Works blog entry that Google put into my search result for several hours. Nice. Well, that was nice of them to do that for you. (laughs) Yeah, that one's going to blow up in their face. (laughs) (laughs) So two good points here in one article despite the fact that Roger Money wrote it. Pretty interesting indeed. Does Can you negative SEO sites? Remember my call out, if you have some test sites that I can do some negative SEO playing with, link building, uh, link building and then the subsequent disavow cleanup, uh, reach out to me, hit me at info at or um, the uh, channel, just drop in the comments and I'll figure out how to connect with you. Uh, and we'll, we'll test this out. I think it's it'll be a valuable test for the community. Real time. It's not going to be scientific or anything, but you know me, I'm just a simple guy. So uh, we'll see how that works. And then the uh, expired domain. Is Google maintaining and keeping the old stuff? And what is old? That's another def- question that needs to be asked uh, to John Mueller or uh, 
a Google representative. How far back are you saving what is on a website? So if I have stuff on there for selling baby products all the way to 2014, 2015 to 2019, I didn't put anything on it. 2020, I put a car blog on it. Are you still counting me as a baby blog because there was stuff on 2014? That's another good question that needs to be asked, I think. Yeah, uh, the Wayback Machine uh, only goes back 14 years. Hmm. But uh, so I guess 14 year history is technically possible. Possible, yeah. Seems kind of short sighted to me personally, but unless Google scrapes a Wayback Machine and then this is how they're determining <laughs> relevance for a search term, which would be pretty well, scary. <laughs> well, clearly the search results aren't ordered in a way where oldest wins otherwise you'd see all this really old crap from 14 years ago yeah so it's freshness well some terms are freshness and then others are authority and then others are could be argued quality yeah but Um, none of them are boosting age you know that doesn't seem to be the thing the thing yep Lots of questions there, Mr. Google Man. All right, this is uh, distilled.net. It's by uh, Robin Lord. How do I make my site rank for a keyword? This is actually pretty good. Uh, Typically, most of these kind of posts you see out there, you know, create a page, optimize a page, do the H1, the title tag, and all that stuff. This is kind of looking at it in a little bit of reverse. Um, Just some things that... Uh, I, I like to point it out is if you use the rank, what changed? Uh, Ted had his or or he's building the uh, the rank tracker. I'm trying to figure out a way to buy it. If he ever gives me a price one of these days, these days you can know. Well, I got to find the time to get it working a lot of <laughs> get updating it working it. since I last used it. And I would not want to even consider selling a broken uh, prototype. Yeah, see. Now you're, you're using business ethics and shit. I don't know what the hell is wrong with you. You're an SEO for kind of <laughs> um, But what changed is actually really cool. So Ted's idea was he was looking at meta descriptions in a lot of the examples that he shared uh, and showing the differences that Google was changing the meta description and it was changing the positions. Um, I think going beyond that is looking at the entire page's as a whole and what changed on those pages uh, that moved it up or down, if anything, I think that would be really cool to look at. I personally, I, I'm not sure. And Ted, he's the tech guy. So how much work would that be? If I, let's say I'm monitoring the top 10 of a keyword and I want to look at code changes. I'm thinking that it would take a little bit to get a piece of software to do that, to download the full top 10 of the, the search result and then compare to the previous ones and then say this is what changed on these sites well Uh, you're you're potentially looking uh from an seo standpoint you're looking at four uh what we call diffs when you compare uh two things and figure out what was added and what was removed right um So you're looking at four diffs. The first diff is in the appearance of the search result. So how did the the text and formatting change? The second diff is in the HTML, the source code view of uh, the search result. So are there things that are visible uh, in the rendered view that have changed underneath? Uh, then you'd want to look at the visible changes of the web page of the ranking URL, and then you would want to look at the source code diff of the web page for the ranking URL. Yeah, okay. So if you had all four of those diffs, you kind of have the whole story as to whether or not the changes uh, were effective and what those changes were. Right. And you- it's doable. It is doable. Yeah, I'll was, I was just, my question would be like, how many resources would you need to do it? Could you do it at a scale? Like, well, you know, my, for me, I, I look at maybe 100 keywords for a project, regardless of how large the project site is. Uh, but there's other people that would want to do thousands. Don't ask me why, but they would want to do thousands. Um, well, my uh, rank tracking prototype was doing change detection on the top 100 results. Uh-huh. So, 
per keyword. <laughs> so yeah, you could totally do thousands. It's totally in the realm of plausibility. Awesome. Awesome. Got your idea. I need to stop giving these ideas out. I'm just finding all my ideas in people's fucking software. Just pointing it out. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's <laughs> a new way to make a patent. You can make a patent that extends upon somebody else's invention. Oh, that's allowable. Oh, let me do that. I don't make a patent on Cora. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, there's nothing novel in Cora. <laughs> Couldn't patent that. A patent the reports I make with Cora. How's that? Uh, let's see. Do the quickest, easiest technical checks. I always use Sitebulb. There's a recommendation here. I'm a technical SEO checklist. It's very handy. Um, and then uh, link building. This is people always answer, ignore this. I'm not building links to my sites. You might not be, someone else might be. Always look at it. Uh, and then uh, we did a test in SIA uh, on press releases and the different ones that worked. And it was a perfect example of why you shouldn't trust one particular link building monitoring tool. Um, and I'll kind of spill the beans is Majestic uh, found, we, we use Magic PR and uh, Press Advantage. Majestic found all of the uh, Magic PR links, but it didn't find any of the press advantage. Ahref was completely inversed. It didn't find half or it found like eight of the Magic PRs, but all of the press advantage ones. Uh, so this is a perfect opportunity to bring that up because you want to make sure that you're using multiple tools to check for your backlinks. So never rely on one. Uh, if you do, you're in for a world of hurt. And then uh, it goes on to making sure you're using the target keyword. It talks about some speed and it talks about a lot of uh, keyword cannibalization or under optimization. Uh, you may just not, uh, I think Ted's proven in a lot of the keyword density tests that he's done with Cora and his testing that, uh, you know, somebody might have 28% optimization. And if you're going in there with five, you're going to lose that battle all day long. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the optimization that's inside of the text. It could be in the code. His The one that always sticks out to me is when he looks at the gaming gaming niche. And the number one site's got like, what, 2,000 references to games and gaming on, inside of the code itself um, versus its competitors that don't necessarily have all that. So. Yeah. You know, the interesting thing from that research is, yeah, there are test cases that go up all the way to 95% keyword density and they rank just fine. Yep. Uh, but what they really show you is that keyword density appears to be the thing. It's not match count. So you really don't have to make a 20,000 keyword skyscraper post uh, to compete on a single term. Uh, you can uh, technically beat that post on that term with just a higher density at a lower word count. Uh, in testing, that happens quite easily. Mm -hmm. Now, the benefit of the uh, skyscraper post is that you have so many more keywords on page that your page will probably rank for that many more keywords. Yep. Uh, so that's the other consideration. But if you're only focusing on one keyword, you don't need to do 25,000 words of content. And, and you can, correct me if I'm wrong, based on what I learned off the, the game, is I don't necessarily have to have those keywords in my content. I can use the title tag for the links. I can use uh, ID tags inside of the the source code. I can change all my images. I can, you know, X, Y, and Z. and yeah, I mean, stuff for lack of a better term, stuff the code. Yeah, yeah, you don't you don't have to make uh, things look unnatural, uh, but you do want your keywords in as many zones of the page as possible because there is something to uh, factor diversity, and the more factors you're making, you know, relevant for the term, it it appears to have a positive impact. Huh. Interesting. Cool. There you go. Heard it from Ted first. Uh, business to community.com. Three wages, three ways to bridge the gap between SEO and PPC. I have been talking for, I don't know, two, three years now that if you are running an SEO campaign and, and I got this from Jerry West. So 
uh, and he's been talking for about, about this longer. If you're going to bother to do an SEO campaign, you should have a PPC campaign in front of it, supporting your conclusions, your keyword choices, and your call to actions in order to make sure that you are, that there's money there. Uh, and to this day, to December 4th, 2019, people are still not doing it uh, and they're cheaping out or they're skipping a lot of steps uh, that are important. Uh, in my opinion, for uh, for SEO. So this is another post. It's not for me. It's not for people I know telling you combine your SEO and your PPC campaigns uh, in order to make more uh, money, more to target better words and in order to have better results from your uh, campaigns. Uh, so what it does is it goes over and looks through some ways you can look at your PPC to find those opportunities. PPC drives SEO. SEO op opens up the opportunity for more keywords through uh, new rankings. And then those new rankings drive new PPC campaigns and rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, and wash over. Uh, and you can actually kill it for your clients. So this is the, uh, this post goes over the analysis of the PPC stuff and how to use that to drive your SEO. Um, well, I like it. It's, it's a great uh, opportunity to mitigate risk. So when there's a gigantic Google update and everybody's running around, uh, you know, just in mass hysteria, uh, the way you should respond is go, oh, I'm an online retailer. We depend upon traffic to sell product. Our revenue uh, pays the bills and keeps the doors open. Massive Google update, I should hedge the bet by increasing my pay-per-click spend until I know the impact of the organic update. Yeah. And that way you can hedge any losses that you might see. It's also a great way to provide uh, ROI to a new SEO client, especially if you're in the, um, you know, the 1500 range if you're selling seo for 199 dollars a month you, this is not going to work for you but if you're in the 750 to 1500 range invest some of that money in a ppc campaign early on to start getting them leads your clients leads so you they can see a roi immediately from the marketing campaign uh, that'll also help you bridge that gap between seo and ppc and maybe they start tossing you some extra money for ppc management as well so um that's you know plenty of ways to to skin this cat i think and uh but you if you are an seo you have to know some fundamentals of ppc uh, and you should be applying that uh, as ppc changes and evolves and and they start taking the like the exact match they're also showing that those ads on partial match now and doing their own thing and forcing machine learning on everybody and stuff as those evolve we have to be ready to adapt to that because it'll eliminate some of the data or information that we're getting out of there uh, but there's where old opportunities are gone new ones uh, show up so uh, maybe that will actually turn out to be better for us but we'll see but if you don't know ppc now and you don't know how to navigate the adwords platform and you can't put up ads uh, it's a good time to start learning I, I would even suggest it's probably past time that you start learning that skill. Uh, Ahrefs, they haven't put out a blog from them in a while, but I thought this was pretty cool is how to become an SEO expert. It brings the, uh, to, to light the question of who is an SEO expert and how do you define an SEO expert? So uh, I think it's, um, I think this is probably how most people are defining it in the, and in so much as how simplistic it is. Um, you know, learn how the search engines works, the understand the ranking factors, the four main buckets, start a website and niche down, create systems and delegate, never stop learning and be patient. The only three that I really well for is learn how search engines work, create systems and delegate, never stop learning, and be patient. Uh, I agree with, and then the rest of these are kind of, week uh, the, the problem the problem with their list is that first bullet learn how search engines work learn how i mean search. google's a black box they're not transparent they don't really tell you what's in the algorithm they change it 300 times a year so 
that one bullet right there has been a 20 year uh, bullet for most of us old school SEOs. Yeah. So it, I wouldn't call it a simple process to learn the ins and outs of what technically works and ranking a site in Google. Yeah. Uh, I would think yeah, I would probably learn how they work now, right now. Well, and, in a and basement, never stop learning. <laughs> that bullet, I, I know what they mean by it. They're like, oh, you know, index a page, oh, keywords and special zones. They're talking about the basics, but. Yeah. I mean, really, to become an expert at that bullet one, I mean, that could be a 20-year endeavor. 20-year effort, yeah. Well, I think it still is, and that's probably why I still like or I enjoy doing SEO because I'm always learning. You, know, you don't get three master's degrees if you hate learning. I love learning, and that's what SEO brings to me. So yeah. that's why I can say learn how search engines work, how those four are probably the ones that, that – are true this would lead you to becoming an, an seo expert starting a website niching down not necessarily that much and bullet twos bound to make them look silly in the future yeah the relevance okay if relevance really mattered why is kyle's lorem ipsum and then other people's exact copies of his website still ranking for multiple keywords if relevance mattered uh authority yeah, we'll play around with that authority and, and brand size, maybe in utility. Not really sure where they were going with this one. So, now uh, keep in mind, I do like the Ahrefs tool set. I oh, just I think their, their list of becoming an expert S SEO has some serious gotchas. Yeah. I, when it brings a question is one is the list is probably too small in my opinion, especially if you're going to be calling yourselves an, an expert and then two, who gets to say what expert is. So uh, more <laughs> often than not, it's usually the SEO calling themselves an SEO expert. Uh, I've even seen so far as people go, well, you you know, Charles float, his was SEO God. He got a lot of grief about that one. Uh, you got another guy running around calling himself the SEO rock star. Um, so who gets to define what expert level is? Yeah. If you changed the name of this article to eight steps to learning the basics of SEO, no complaint. Like yeah. all my complaints go away. It's just, mistitled yeah hmm. interesting <clears throat> great conversation though an seo expert who i mean who gets to decide at what point do you actually become an seo expert maybe when you have your own youtube shows <laughs> uh let's see databox.com 20 free 29 free link building tips for building links on little no budget these are always cool because there's Typically, there's one or two methods in here that you just didn't think about or you forgot about and didn't use. So I liked uh, this. I got a nice big list. I won't bore you by going through each one, but uh, contributing quotes for a backlink, that's a really good one. Guest posts are, are still doing good right now. Syndicating content, that's if you guys are using like the IFTTT or, or uh, Zapier or whatever to syndicate your content across things. Be a podcast guest. That's the one I want to leverage a, a whole lot more. Um, and this one was interesting. Fixing broken links for a site owner. And that's basically going through, doing an audit, finding broken links, and uh, and then saying, um, hey, we can we'll fix it for you. Kind of a play off of the broken link building method, which I can tell you it does work. But it, if you want to find the slowest possible way to get back links, use the broken link method. Um. And then offer services for return on a backlink. That's a really good one too. I've used that one myself and you can leverage it to no end. Or you can even discount. So let's say like I do page speed optimization services. I want a whole bunch of, uh, I'm looking for reviews and or backlinks. I can just drop the price down to $25 and go, I'll do it for $25 and the backlink from your website. And uh, that's a good way to generate uh, backlinks for sure. Uh, so 30 in here, it says 29, but there's actually 30. So I think you'll uh, definitely get something out of this one. That's pretty cool. 
And then the final story is the worst link building advice for 2019. And then this one is experts shed what not to do. So it kind of goes back into, you know, who's an expert and why would you say X, Y, and Z is a bad thing or does it even work? Uh, I like this post because there's a whole bunch of things in here you can go through and test out and figure out if they is true or, um, or not. Uh, so that would be uh this is a this is pretty cool um this one not so much let's see guest posting this is the argument the guest posting does it negatively affect link building it's kind of backwards the way this post was wrote kevin indig from g2 using soft rumor like expos to spam posts across thousands of blog posts use is the worst linking idea i know um, but you can counter that test and actually go and see if you can use x rumor and spam and rank uh pages uh, I would argue that you still can. Uh, worst link building is spend hours going around commenting on blog posts, uh, natural blog comments, uh, not using software and stuff, and actually engaging with people inside of their websites and stuff and, and building backlinks to your site. Uh, that works. Do you necessarily have to spend hours doing it? Nope. Um, but that's interesting. No follow link is not pursuing. This is a... Um, there he's countering that you can now which is you know i've been using no follow links to rank websites for a long time um since google started ignoring their own guidelines and passing juice through no follow so that's he's he's on it in my opinion uh but you can go back here and do the same thing uh go through these posts and find things that they say don't work or, or even things that they do work and you have a whole bunch of tests right there uh, I'm certainly going to go through again and create a whole bunch of tests for SIA just to counter or support their arguments here. So, um, again, this is a nice X. And if you're looking for content, this is a good way to do it. Um, a lot of people, even I respond to these, I respond to emails. You know, if they're asking a cool question that is relevant to me, I have no problem responding to them and figuring out or in providing my input and I get a backlink and some recognition on another website from it. So yeah, there is um, one of those that you scanned past that was uh, showing outrage towards uh, uh, lots of comments. <laughs> but the, the thing is, is, you know, if you look at Brian Dean's work, you know, the reason it has so many keyword matches on page is the non paginating comment yeah, threads. Like when you look at threads, right? Matt Cutts old web log, which is still online, you know, one of the things it has is non-paginating comment threads, you know. Right. So you have all these white hats who are doing these tactics that these people have outrage for, uh, but they rank at the top of Google. Mm -hmm. So I'd say look into it if you're skeptical. <laughs> but often where there's smoke, there's fire. I, to me, and this is a process that always worked for me. If people said, don't do it, then I go out and do it and see if it actually works. Uh, and that's usually turned into some of my best link building methods. Um, so and that's that to me, that's, that's why that post really attracted me. I'm sure, you know, we've shown a lot of roundups before and stuff. And I think if you've seen one, you've seen them all. Um, but you can get a lot of let's say I'll call it counterintelligence from a military background. You can get a lot of counterintelligence on what your competition is doing by looking at those roundup posts and saying, and then going back behind them and, and validating what they say uh, doesn't work and seeing if it actually does. So um, I would actually, you know, that's, a, that's a good one. So I, I, I think, it, yeah, I think you'd be missing out if you didn't turn those into some kind of test or something, or at least try them out in, in one shape or form. I agree and besides is link building john Mueller said that they you know they ignore bad links so if you build back links it should be no problem well they <laughs> don't ignore all the no follows but that was after they scared the whole world into having do follow links so yeah. everybody no followed everything and page rank became a piece of garbage yeah and then everyone went and found uh, only do follow links for the profiles and it was made them easier to find people and give them manuals bad action. So <laughs> just pointing it out to you. <laughs> All right. That looks like that's it there. I don't see any questions inside of there. So that was a good episode. Only again, only six, um, six stories, 40 minutes of, of good ranting out of those six stories. I think is pretty cool. You got some testing ideas. You got some link building ideas and, 
Uh, you got to see Ted fly off the handle because John Mueller is saying that, um, you know, it's a madness. So basically, I don't know how to summarize it any better than that. So, um, go ahead again if you uh, are looking for and you need, what can allow me to negative SEO your websites. Uh, send me uh, a couple of test sites so that we can knock that out and find out what is the scale of Google's uh, ability to ignore bad links. But uh, um, just keep in mind when you let Clint have at it, just consider that domain name flush down the toilet. Yeah, I mean, just <laughs> you, you can hope for the best, but expect the worst. Yeah. Yeah. So don't give me your money sites. God, no. But if you got, you know, a domain sitting out there that's just, you haven't touched in a year or two, you know, let's knock it out. Let's see if it's true. Uh, and then also open up those, those, um, uh, those, those posts and, and get in the testing yourself. Uh, if you need help with testing, you have the uh, search intelligence agency. I, you know, I'm part of that. Uh, and you also have the internet marketing gold that Kyle and Ted run over at internet marketing gold. Uh, both of those communities can help you get involved in testing, see test results, or if anything, take your test ideas to those communities and they'll be able to facilitate the test for you uh, and uh, see what comes out. I am a member of internet marketing gold and I run the, the uh, community over at SIA and the face that runs the place. Uh, and so, you know, we're sharing tests and test results and, and they're, you know, they're using their methodologies. We're using ours and see if we can come up with some, some stuff that actually bounces off and, and supports each other in the community as a whole. So uh, make sure you check out both of those groups as Ted and showed talked about earlier in the show SEO fight club tomorrow, 11 P or 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Ted, again, remind us what we're talking about. Well, we are going to review the link that Google put into my search result, uh, probably to prank me <laughs> over the weekend. <laughs> who knows? Maybe they have no clue who I am and it's just a weird Google thing, but I have never seen Google put a URL in somebody else's result before. And the URL they put in my search result for several hours was the entry to the How Search Works blog post on Google. So uh, being a good sport, I read the, the blog post and <laughs> there are issues. <laughs> nice. So tomorrow we're going to go in depth into the content that Google went out of their way to put into my search result. Cool. Uh, and we do have one question is how many tiers are you building links to? Um, I'm assuming that question is to me because I don't know if Ted's doing link building right now, but I typically go tier one, two, and three. I don't go, I don't play, you know, 50 steps to Kevin Bacon with those 10 tier backlink things that people are teaching everybody. Uh, I think there's no point for that. I'll stop at tier three if I even go that far. Uh, tier one is typically a supporting page on my website. So I have money page and supporting page. Those supporting pages are essentially my tier ones. Uh, and then I'll use good, high quality links that I create in uh, different ways to link to link to those. And that's my tier two. And then tier three is the backlinks to support that. So maybe a GSA Seer, X Rumor, or uh, Ranker X kind of thing. Today. Yeah, the uh, uh, I, I do a similar thing. I, I view my tiers is you know my my money site i consider that all one tier uh then my next tier is other sites i control i have complete access to i can clean them up i can change them i can control the context and the linking so other sites i control is the next year that would include all of the brand uh claims all the social uh, platforms and web 2.0s and uh, things of that nature, synergy sites. And then tier three to me is any site I don't control. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are the sites that once you get the links out there, it's going to be next to impossible to remove them. So that's the, the tier three. And you generally want your tier three to point to sites you control because then you have an ability to clean up and sites you control point to your money site. 
Uh, and then let's see, Mike Calvin, he's got one. Let's see, uh, the money page on site X, he sets up 10 sub pages, all of those pointing to, to the money page. So far, so good. I would add interlink all of those. So every each sub page should link to the other nine sub pages uh, and the money site. And then do a GSA contextual blast of 500 links spread all over the 11 pages. Would this be better than sending 500 links straight to the money page? So one, yes, because you're using GSA. Two, I would actually test the volume. I've done this, uh, some tests, and I referred to that in the uh, negative SEO, is there's a point uh, in between the amount of links and the velocity that you drop the links with GSA here, where you'll get... Um, a negative return. I wasn't able to actually completely tank a site, but I didn't get any improvement of it. It stopped. Uh, and I stopped at a thousand links on these, on that test. Um, that's the range. So two to a thousand. Um, and there's and that right in the middle there, Google stopped giving me credit for uh, the backlinks from GSA SEER. So you need to, before you actually do that to your supporting pages, before you run it, validate your, your setup on GSA SEER on a test site and find where that magic number is, where Google's going to stop uh, giving you credit. Uh, and then you, you'll be okay. Uh, what I Be prepared because you're using SEER to, to know that you might have to kill those sub pages and build all new ones in order to wash out the any negative juice that you get it so that's why that's again that's another reason why i recommend testing that um i don't necessarily all point gsa seer right at money sites though i'll i build a good you know some web twos or do a seo autopilot blast um, kind of contextual campaign to those supporting pages and then hit those with GSA here. Uh, to me, that's just a little bit safer, but if you're well, if you know how to use here, you know how to set up the campaigns and you're very comfortable with it, just test your projects out on a test site first, make sure you hit that, find that magic number. Cause you might not need 500, maybe one or 200 and for each of those supporting pages will be good enough. So that's how I would approach that. All right, and that's it. Uh, thank you all for watching episode 145 of SEO this week. Make sure to check us out tomorrow on SEO Fight Club. And as always, if you have questions, drop them in the comments and please hit the thumbs up or thumbs down. Engagement is engagement. We'll take it all. Uh, subscribe and hit the bell if you want to get notified for new shows. And we'll see you all next week. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.